Thank you for the intro. Hello, everyone. My name is Anab Judaki, and I'm a recent PhD graduate from the University of Ontario Institute of Technology. And this work I'm presenting today is uh, part of my PhD research, which I did under supervision of Dr. Julie Thorpe and Dr. Miguel Vargas Martin. So let's get started by uh, introducing our system. Implicitly reinforced passphrases. So it's always challenging to have a good balance of security and usability. And uh, what we are looking for is to use implicit learning in order to improve uh, memorability of uh, something which is not memorable, which is system assigned passphrases. So through our design system, we got uh, we designed a system which had a high success rate for the authentication for system assigned passphrases, which uh, with 89% of the success rate, and uh, which is comparable to a, a basic passphrase with uh, no training. And we also got an average login time of 13 seconds, which was comparably better than a basic passphrase, which uh, has a 45 second of uh, login time. So let's start by talking about our motivation. So the motivation for focusing on system assigned passphrases is first, user chosen passwords are easy to uh, guess. And leaks from other verifiers is a very uh, is a common threat which results in a credential thefts and uh, which is due in, on many accounts, which is due, due to reuse of the pa uh, reuse of the passwords. So the key contribution we had on this work is that we're presenting an approach for system assigned passphrases that harness implicit memory of users in order to improve memorability. So we call our approach implicitly reinforced passphrases. And uh, through an online study, user study on mechanical trick with 780 uh, participants, we showed that this approach outperformed our control conditions. So the essence is uh, to provide an optimized training period that triggers implicit memory. And uh, in order to do that, we use two paradigms, which uh, is basically they're enabled by implicit memory. The first one is contextual queuing, which uh, we use CC. In order to refer to that, we use CC. And we also use semantic priming, which we refer as SP in the next few slides. So given these two main paradigms that were the main foundation for our work, I'm going to start explaining each and explaining how they've been uh, incorporated in our uh, design system. So contextual queuing. Basically, it's a paradigm in psychology which facilitates a visual search and uh, for some displays, which also they're called context or displays. There are arrangements of some letters, and uh, the user's task is to look for a T letter, which is surrounded by some uh, L letters. They rotate it uh, uh, different ways. And uh, by having specific arrangements of display, these kinds of displays, visual search would be more quickly and more efficiently because of the the repetition on the location of these items on the displays. So this is the main idea of contextual queuing and how it works. So in a, base, uh, in a traditional contextual queuing uh, uh, task, uh, basically users are provided with some repeated displays where, wherein their location of the items are preserved. And the user task is to find a T letter among those L letters. And there are also some novel displays, which they don't have any preserv preservation, and the arrangement is completely uh, random. So these displays are shown to the users uh, 50, for 15 times and 15 repetitions. However, the learning happens after the fourth repetition. So the user task, after seeing all these displays repeatedly, user search performance will be improved. And the interesting thing about this approach is that this is completely implicit, where when the users are asked whether you found any uh, any repetition, they, they are not aware of that. This is completely unconscious, and users are not aware of these repetitions that they're meant to be in the experiment. So how we use that in our approach? So the idea was to have a T letter as a target with surrounded with some distractors. In order to use that in our approach, we just uh, uh, included displays. We are on which in each display we have a target word, which is a word in the user's passphrase. This word is just surrounded by some uh, other words. And these words are uh, basically the, the way that they are presented to the users are having included contextual queuing by showing the users uh, in the same locations for a specific amount of time and for uh, repeatedly. The second uh, paradigm that we use in our approach is semantic priming. Basically, priming is a technique whereby exposure of uh, what is stimulus influences uh, the response to the uh, sub uh, subsequent uh, uh, stimulus without conscious guidance or uh, intention. 
An example for uh, and priming, uh, we have a kind of priming, which is called semantic priming. And in semantic priming, when a word such as a target word such as a dog is preceded by a ran, uh, by a, a semantic re related word such as a cat, then the user response would be much faster uh, compared to when this uh, word dog is uh, preceded by something irrelevant, irrelevant such as a book. So how we use semantic priming in our approach? So having this place containing users' uh, passphrase word, we surrounded the user's passphrase word with some semantically related word. On each display, we have semantic relation between the words that there are uh, in the display. So here's the user's pass, uh, the passphrase uh, word, and then which is surrounded by some semantic related words. So here for the purpose of demonstration, there are less number of words, but in the actual experiment, I'm gonna explain how many words we have on each display. So a training uh, phase basically contains uh, a set of uh, displays wherein we have on each display, we have a, a word of the passphrase and each display is presented for five seconds, just following the same thing we have in uh, contextual queuing. And the rest of the displays, all the, the other three displays are going to present one uh, other words of the passphrase. So four displays and uh, each representing one pa uh, passphrase word and uh, these words, these displays are repeatedly shown to the user five times, and the exposure is repeatedly showing the same displays to the user, to the user which uh, is each display is presenting user's passphrase word. So here I'm going, I'm having a sample login uh, training task, which you can see how the users were provided with this in this experiment. So as you can see, the target word is highlighted in here, and the target word, which is in a different font, the user task is to find the target word, click on that, and depending on the user's uh, 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 finding whatever the user finds, the, you can see that the border turns green. If the answer is wrong, then that uh, turns uh, red. So repeated exposure of these displays would uh, <laughs> allow user to reinforce memorizing them by using these two implicitly uh, implicit memory uh, enabled approaches. So users are pre presented by this displays and the user task is just to find the word which has different font but that word is the user's passphrase word. So as you can see all these displays are repeatedly shown to the user for five times based on our experiment design and uh, we are having them uh, on the same location, which is preserved location for the items and the arrangement of the displays are going to be preserved. <coughs> so for the login uh, session, what we have, we have a login session, which the users are provided with the with those displays. However, the, the target word is no longer in different font. And again, the user task is to find the word and click on that. So as for the purpose of demonstration, we are having this, uh, we slowed down this process. However, the users were much faster in finding the uh, words. So we performed a user study of, uh, uh, we started a user study of with 780 participants on Amazon Mechanical Turk. So they started by the training session. We had different conditions for our study and each uh, user was assigned a, random, a condition randomly. And uh, after that session, the users were provided with an immediate testing session. And then at the end of that session, the first session, we had questionnaire demographic to get some demographic uh, idea of our users. So our second session was a testing session or a login session that was 24 to 48 hours after the first uh, training session. And again, they went through a login session with 476 participants and we had 430 participants who re they returned back one week after the, the, the their training session and again they were provided with the login uh, task and they were supposed to log in. So at the end, we uh, asked, uh, we provided them with a questionnaire to just find out more about the user's perce perceptions toward the system. So I'm going to now present different conditions, uh, different uh, study conditions. However, I'm just focusing on, on a few since uh, there, there are more on the paper. I'm just focusing on those that are very more of uh, interest. So we included a study condition wherein uh, we have a CC only. So the displays are just presented to the users where uh, you know they're, uh, they're repeatedly shown to the user for five seconds. However, there's no relations between the words. There's no relation between the words on each display. And these displays are repeated shown for to the user for five times and the user's task is to find the uh, target word. 
We have preserved locations for the items, which is a factor in CC, and we also have repetition and exposure time. Our system is where we, our main interest uh, was to include or incorporate CC and SP together. So we had those displays, however, uh, with uh, CC enabled displays. However, uh, for this, this uh, for this uh, study condition, we also had the relation, the semantic relation between the words on each display. So the relation is only on, uh, on each display, not between the displays. So another condition of interest was a repetition. So we were interested to see whether it's just repetition of repeatedly uh, exposing to some displays, which uh, helps users to recognize uh, the this, uh, their passphrase words. Uh, is, is that the reason that we have improved memorability? So we included this repetition condition. And on this repetition condition, just a, a set of random words are repeatedly shown to the users. There is no preserved location. and. Uh, Basically, there's no CC involved. So this was a control to see whether repetition recognition was the fact for improving memorability. So we then had a basic control condition where users were assigned the passphrase words, and they were asked to type in afterward when they come back. So we were interested in a few uh, measures for our, for our approach. First, we were looking for uh, seeing whether how, how was the storage behavior of the users. We just, our system captured copy, paste, or screenshots automatically. And we also asked the user to be honest and just uh, let us know if they have done any uh, recording. So the lowest number of uh, recording was for the CCSV uh, con uh, condition, which was our system. And the highest rate of 34 people, we had them for uh, control condition, which the difference between these two are uh, is, is statistically significant. And I'm focusing on the result for this third login session, which the users who were attended the uh, login, uh, the first two sessions were qualified to do, uh, go through this session. So we had a uh, highest success rate for our CCSP condition and the lowest for the control condition, which they had a statistically significant difference. And we also found a statistically significant difference for the login success rate. Uh, between our CCSP and repetition, which confirms that it was not just repetition, which uh, improved memorability. For the login time, we have 13 seconds for the uh, CCSP and for about 50 seconds for the um, repetition, which is the lowest and highest login uh, time. And we also had that uh, another uh, the, the difference between CCSP and control in terms of the login time was also significant. So we also included uh, this system usability scale uh, in order to uh, assess a subjective reaction uh, toward the system. So we had the highest score for CCSP, which was significantly better than uh, the user's perceptions for control condition. And uh, we all, as you can see, the, the difference between these two were also, was also significant. For CCSP and repetition, the user's uh, perception was uh, more uh, positive towards uh, CCSP. So the usable, in terms of usability of uh, uh, evaluating our approach, our scheme was uh, perceived as easy to learn uh, since 96% of users just uh, reported that, which to be easy to be uh, learned. So it has infrequent errors compared to system assigned passphrases since the users don't need to have them typed. They just uh, click on the words. And our approach has improved uh, mean uh, training or enrollment uh, of 64 seconds and login time of 13 seconds, which is comparably better than previous work. So in terms of security, since this is a system assigned approach and this is system assigned passphrase, it offers tar uh, resistance to targeted impersonation, uh, product guessing, and uh, least from other verifiers. These are the uh, benefits that we get from any system assigned approach. And uh, to calculate the key space for approach, since the users were provided with four different displays, each display contains 32 words. So there are two to the power of five guesses for each display. Since we had four displays, which they were supposed to uh, for the login session to the user, uh, the, the key space for that would be two to the power of five to the power of uh, four, which is two to the power of 20. And this is uh, this key space is considered to be, uh, um, uh, based on the previous work, is a don't care region where and uh, if uh, anything uh, beyond that, uh, in terms of security, we have less gain. However, the cost that we can have for the uh, for usability would be uh, pretty high. So our approach has resistance to classical uh, phishing. So to lower uh, how this. Uh, 
attack could be to, to lure a user to click on a display on, on, on their password's words. So the attacker needs to mimic uh, our uh, system and then provide users with correct displays. So we have uh, 40, for our experiment, we had 40 set of uh, semantically uh, related words. So for this, uh, with this, uh, Assumption: We expect to have, or uh, we expect it to take two to the power of twenty phishing uh, challenges for the attacker to provide the users to users all in order to successfully recover uh, users' passphrase. And uh, in, even if the user is able to detect whether the, the, those displays are not familiar to the user, so this makes the uh, attacker's uh, job harder in order to uh, better challenge the user. So the use case of our approach could be, uh, our proposed approach uh, could be a potentially useful in variety of a setting that they seek protection against uh, online attacks. And if, uh, it could be used as a single factor in some environments or as a second knowledge base factor in high security environments. And uh, the, the general approach of using implicit learning to reinforce explicit memory is uh, in authentication can be applied in many different settings. So as a conclusion for this uh, uh, work, so implicit reinforced passphrases has the following benefits over uh, regular system assigned passphrases. So it has improved memorability, and uh, it has reduced login times. It also has uh, reduced storage rates, as we could see uh, that compared to the uh, you know system assigned passphrases, and. Uh, it has also reduced input errors due to the fact that the users are not uh, having, uh, they, they don't have to type the uh, passphrase and they just need to uh, click on the passphrase words. And it has also improved users' perceptions. Users uh, provided us with a, a better perception toward the system as the uh, SOS scores uh, also confirm. And user's perception toward the system was pretty positive because of training that they were provided with, they had more positive uh, perception toward the system. And of course, our approach has, is providing a resistance to classical phishing, which is another uh, interesting uh, uh, benefit that we can get security-wise from an approach. So for uh, a recent uh, result, uh, we were interested to see whether by uh, excluding those logging queues, whether we still can get high success rate for uh, our approach. So what we did, we had our CCSP uh, system. However, in that system, instead of providing users with the login queues, we just removed the login queues. They just went through the training. And then for the login session, they were provided with uh, four text boxes and they were asked to type in their passphrase words. So we did. Uh, we found that this recall rate for this approach is about 65%, which is not as high as what we had for the uh, CCSP itself when it was provided with some login queues. However, still it's uh, better than the control condition. So this condition had significant imp improvement for the login time and storage rate and it's still for the user sentiment towards the, towards the approach. Uh, so by removing those uh, login, th by removing those login queues, we found that this is not going to be as successful as it was for the uh, uh, when we have them with the login. Logging queues, however, still was doing better in other in terms of other factors. So, what we're interested in as our future work is to examine our approach in different environments, such as uh, mobile or banking, etc. These are other environments that we're interested to uh, test whether this approach could work or could could potentially be useful for. And we're also interested to have more variants of our uh, approach. For example, we are interested to see whether uh, by increasing the number of displays, instead of, for example, now we have four displays, by increasing the number of displays to be uh, five or six displays, can be improved uh, the user, uh, the system resistance to offline attacks. And uh, so it could, you know, since we have uh, for our system design, we have four uh, word system assigned passphrases. However, having that increasing, that we're interested to see whether uh, we, by gaining security, whether we still have the same usability for uh, this approach. 
We're also interested to see by including a free form control condition with some uh, with the same key space as our uh, as repetition and uh, CC and CCSB. Can we still have the same amount of improvement where we what compared to what we had for uh, this comparison that we had in our approach? And uh, we're also interested to include a free form control condition with some rehearsal or repetition phase. So since the users in the control condition were not provided with any rehearsal or um, with any rehearsal or uh, any tools for them to rehearse, we're interested to see if we provide or include any rehearsal for that control condition. Uh, is it does that allow user to better memorize or it does it have any effect compare and then have a and have a another comparison with uh, in terms of other the factors that we had with our approach and that's the end of my presentation uh, which uh, here's uh, I'm ready for the questions and here's my contact info and uh, thanks for listening Hi, um, I have a question about the strengths evaluation. Can you go to your slide for the strengths? <laughs> so it's uh, um, strengths, uh, actually the number, uh, two to the five times, uh, yeah, 32 oh, times. Oh, yes, yes, that's key space. So that looks like uh, two to the 20 is about 10 to the seven or something. And uh, the don't care region paper said 10 to the 16 is offline guessing attack. So. It's two to the power of point. Anything, any, right. uh, any uh, key space between two to the power of forty, two to the power of twenty, two to the power of forty-seven. Based on that paper, this is considered as a don't care region. So don't care region. I, I believe offline guessing attack limit is ten to the sixteen, and the ten number appeared to be much less. And uh, ten, also ten, ten to, to the, the six. Ten to the six offline guessing limit. I think it's two to the power of twenty, two to the power of forty-six. That's okay. uh, so based on that paper. Do you remember? Yeah, it's uh, two to the six. Is the O online guessing attack. For online yeah. guessing, this is, yeah, I'm just. Two to the 14. Yeah, two to the 14 is offline guessing limit, right? So that is low, much lower than offline guessing limit. And uh, there's another paper saying collector's battery stable paper said a uh, five word based uh, passphrase is not strong and not secure. So what do you think about still this four, five, so four word based passphrase? And it's, it's a first system assigned passphrase. And as yeah. I said, it's uh, it's uh, this uh, falls into two to power of 20 and you're uh, just uh, providing another number. However, what we're interested, what, what we're interested in is to see if we incorporate uh, this type of learning, do we get, uh, g we started by four, uh, four system assigned, pa four word system assigned passphrases. We started by that and see whether this type of learning works. So given the uh, the improvement that we got in terms of memorability for this system assigned passphrases, we're, as a future work, we're interested to see by in increasing the number of displays, we're still getting, uh, uh, we're still getting this memorability benefit or not. This. So we can we can talk after. Hi, uh, interesting talk. Uh, so I just uh, wanted to um, ask for a little bit of clarification. Uh, do you know why uh, in the uh, um, control condition uh, it took so long for users to enter their password? That kind of surprised me a little bit. So the problem with that was uh, first uh, they needed to have more attempts to uh, you know uh, fi recall their passphrase a week after, and also they were ha they had to just type in their passphrase. They had uh, they made uh, some you know uh, they had uh, some typos. They have some errors that were they were making for this condition. However, because of the typing compared to just clicking the words where they have Q and when they were provided with the learning, they had different type different time for uh, for their uh, recalling. Okay, so if we uh, conditioned on like users who uh, get it correct on the first time, does that drop uh, uh, significantly? With this, this numbers that we're providing here is considering all the users who were able to uh, successfully uh, log in in uh, five attempts. Okay. Okay. Yes. Hi, Xavier Hi. Carnet, Carnet Valley from Concordia University. Um, uh, so your system is uh, basically requiring a modification of the logging process, right? So could you walk me through, for example, uh, protecting an online account? I'm the user, I type my username. Now the server needs to provide me with uh, specific displays that are, include uh, some parts of the, the passphrase, right? Right. So uh, an attacker 
all just given my username would already be able to access those displays, right? There's no. The, the attacker, uh, for are you talking about phishing attacks or? Uh, yeah, for example. For example, for phishing attack, the attacker needs to uh, create those displays, need to, needs to re uh, regenerate those displays. So where the, the exact same set of words, because the, what the user is learning is the whole context, that target word, which is surrounded by some semantic related words. The attacker job is to just create those displays, which, uh, having, which, is, which they're having the same context. And since they've been learned implicitly, what the user has been learned is the whole display. So this is, and the attacker is to just rege regenerate those displays. Okay, but can the attacker mimic. just, uh, can the attacker just like query the uh, actual websites to get those displays provided for the username? Are you asking about how they're stored or how they're stored on the server or is that the... Mm, no, well, if you go on a phishing website, you would enter your username and now that phishing website could retrieve the actual displays from the real websites and present that to the user. But making that just making, relay them, right? Making that display is the uh, the important. To the user, the attacker needs to create the same display, which has the same set of words. Mm -hmm. So where where having those same set of words is uh, is a challenge for the attacker. Okay. Does that answer the question? Okay. Or we'll we can probably take that offline. Okay, sure.